This lesson is dedicated to making a butterfly candle, and we're going to practice two new elements and methods of cutting. First of all, you have probably noticed the elements are situated between the edges. They look like so-called tongues and spirals, and we will carve them using a loop knife. Another new thing is that we will cut the elements both top-down and down-up. Apart from that, this candle is quite simple to make, so choose a color pattern and start dipping. Let's start cutting the candle. As usual, first remove the excessive paraffin from the candle wick. When the paraffin is still warm, it's much easier to remove it. When it gets cold, it becomes harder to clean off and the wick can be damaged in the process. And then, of course, cut the bottom. You can do that in any convenient way. Always put the candle on the table to see if the bottom is really flat. Sometimes it may seem like you've cut well, but the candle still tilts. Now let's start carving the pattern. As we already know, this candle is special in a way that the elements are carved in both directions. So, to determine the level towards which the top and the bottom elements will be cut, we need to make some marks. Using the rear side of the knife, make marks in the middle of the candle. Make small marks. And if you chose the color pattern where you dip the candle in two colors which meet in the middle, then you may skip making marks, because the border is quite visible. However, if the candle is monochromatic or the color transitions aren't clear, then better make the marks. Then we can begin carving with the upper part. Only one petal is situated here, and it forms the top wing of the butterfly. Despite the fact that it's the first element, we'll cut deeply, making a thick petal that will open up all the colors at once. Start at the highest mark on the top vertical part, and cut a thick petal. Stop a little bit before the middle. Then, smoothly and carefully bend the tip of the petal at 180 degrees. The rest of the petal stays half-bent and shows the color pattern gradually. The inner edge of the petal should be pressed firmly to the candle surface. So the inside rib clings to the candle. The rest of the petal is in the turn and the tip is pressed. Then carve the next petal, but bend it in the opposite direction. So if the previous petal looked to the left, then in this case this one will look to the right. Again press the tip firmly to the candle. Try to make all movements similar to each other. Keep working with the upper part of the candle, because it tends to get cold quicker than the bottom. Now 
though if you wish to start at the bottom, you can do so, as the two parts don't depend on each other. So you can easily change the order of carving. Keep cutting, alternating the sides on each edge. Left and right, left and right. Join the petal tips and the places of the cuts tightly and neatly. There should be no gaps. And the transition between the petal and the candle should be as little visible as possible. So put the petal back on the place where you cut it. As you can see, the petals are very thick and firm. Even the very first cut already shows all colors, and even the base is visible. Now make the last element, press it firmly, and now if you bend all elements right, then in the end two neighboring petals will look in the opposite directions. If you see that they don't, then find where you made a mistake and bend a petal in the wrong direction, and then you can correct this place. Now let's start carving the lower part. The actions here are just the same, only that we cut down up. Make good firm petals and stop cutting a little bit before the middle of the candle again. In this way there should be some space left between the upper and the lower petal. You should bend the petal in the same direction as the upper one, so they look like a mirror reflection of each other. Further on, you are guided by elements on both parts of the candle, and it's easy to see where to bend the petals. So if the upper petal looks to the left, then the lower one has to do the same. Cut well to show all the colors and press the tips firmly. Only the tips are fully turned and fixed at the candle. If you find it difficult to hold the candle, then you can secure the grip by placing your thumb at the bottom and your index and middle fingers at the top. The down-up cut will get easier this way. Unfortunately, we can't use this method on big candles, but for now, it works just fine. All is done. And now we will carve the elements with a loop knife, which is sharp on both sides. So we can use both sides to cut. We'll start with the simpler elements between the petals, in the place where they open up towards each other. These small elements are called tongues. They are made by cutting small sections on the candle. As always, the tips are thin and the roots should be thick. The rules stay the same as for the rest of the petals. When carving, carve on every second edge, which means only those places where the petals face each other, and then skip an edge. 
Repeat the same cuts on the lower part. If the layer is split, smooth them. Then press the tips firmly. Each tongue should get a pair and they should meet right in the middle. In the rest of the edges we'll carve spirals. Cut a long tongue in the same way as before, starting with a thin tip and finishing with a really thick root. Begin to curl the spiral from the tip and make sure that all curls are placed evenly. This depends on how evenly you cut the tongue. Fix it back in the groove, press to the candle and then repeat the same thing twice more, cutting through all layers. At the same time, try not to cut through the candle's base. It is less flexible and can start splitting and breaking if you curl it. Make one more last spiral with a thin tip and a thick root. Curl it. And fix it. But pay attention that the spirals shouldn't drown in the grooves made by the cuts. They should stay a little bit at the surface. Check everything and cut the upper hole. Try not to squeeze the candle too much while putting it on the table. Place the round knife exactly in the center. If the paraffin doesn't come out with the round knife, then help it with the simple one. Our candle is ready! And now we need to varnish it. The candle is ready and as you can see it is quite small and there aren't too many elements. But nonetheless we should be very careful while carving them and make all elements neat. It is especially important in terms of symmetry where the petals both open up towards each other and also look in the opposite directions. So, despite the fact that we don't have too many elements to make, we still need to work a lot on them. Also, pay attention that the spirals should be curled evenly and all the curls have to be spread evenly on the spiral. Practice with the loop knife more if you find them difficult. Take a candle and only carve spirals and tongues on it in advance. Such butterfly pattern is one of the basic patterns and we will use it often in the future. So, practice making it on small candles at least 10 times because they will be a part of much more complex patterns. As we know, practice makes perfect.